Hi everyone, I'm Sarah, a third year medical student in Australia and today I'm doing my first day for my GP rotation. Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel on this joyous day. I am extremely happy. I'm going to my GP placement this week and it's only 10 minutes down the road so theoretically I could sleep until 7.30 if I wanted to. I am very very excited and happy about this because in the last few weeks when I've been going all the way to my hospital placement it's been an hour drive plus it was starting at eight o'clock and if I did want to catch a train and get a friend to pick me up it just it was a huge amount of time oh, so it's just so nice I've got my mornings back but for now my dogs are in much need of some playtime and so I'm gonna go do that now We have half an hour to do a quick bit of study, see if I can grab, get some learning points done. Then we head into GP. I am excited for GP, but I had such a good experience in the hospital. Oh, it's so good. Working as a team, getting to run to acute situations. Patients come in, they have all their files ready, imaging, bloods. So this will be quite different, but there are things I do like about GP, doing small procedures, the variety that you get. I think it also is more impactful on people's lives in that it is more holistic care so if you're going to the hospital we're trying to stop you dying and then we just send you home and it doesn't matter if you're still dealing with five issues that are really affecting your life gps also have a lot of flexibility in australia especially if you go regionally you can sub-specialize you can also work in the hospital as long as you keep your skills up so it's definitely not going to write me off if i have a bad experience but it'll be interesting it'll be interesting to see what i think about it now after hospital placement. So. so I've just been doing some revision on celiac disease this morning, uh, just looking at different tests. And I have to say my new favorite website is the Royal College of Pathologies of Australia. They have so much comprehensive information about different testing which is what my learning point is on so that's been really good and i think i want to go over the mechanism again because celiac disease is quite complex in terms of its really nitty-gritty details of how the pathology works ah, but it's been nice i i'm loving this placement so far it's one day and i'm loving these mornings so um that's been good so anyway we have to go now though We have arrived, it did not take long at all and I still have plenty of time so I'm gonna head in and say hello to everyone. Before the first patient arrived, I was tasked with putting paper on the bed and filling syringes with local anaesthetic, which has lidocaine, adrenaline, and a tiny bit of bicarb, which is used just to take the sting out of the anaesthetic when it goes into the skin. From there, we started the day with routine skin checks. The GP provided me with my own dermoscope to use so I could follow along with her looking at the suspicious lesions. Most of the morning, we had a lot of BCCs and SCCs. One of the more fascinating lesions I saw today under the dermoscope was actinic keratosis, which was starting to turn into an SCC. See the little round circles? That's from the sun damage and it's quite typical of this type of lesion. One of the patients that came in today had a very typical looking melanoma. This melanoma under the dermoscope had irregular edges, it was dark, and inside it did have multiple colours which were really obvious under the dermoscope. I could see a pink like glow under the lesion and sometimes you could even see blue. This is very typical of melanomas and I must have seen three of these in the morning. Now there's a few different types of melanomas, the main one being the superficial spreading melanoma which is most of the melanomas you're probably familiar with, so it's got irregular edges and they're quite dark. 
There's a few other ones that are slightly less common, but the most interesting for me was actually one that is fairly rare. This one is called the acrolytigimous melanoma. It's a tricky word to say. This one is essentially colorless, so it's really easy to miss. The doctor started by making an ellipse shape to cut out the lesion. Then she sliced down into the fat layer and removed all the tissue surrounding the melanoma. She used this device to cauterize the vessels, essentially burn the ends so they stop bleeding, so we can put in our stitches. She started stitching up inside the fat layer with internal stitches and then handed me the forceps and the thread and said, would you like to have a go at the external sutures? I can't express how fun this was and how exciting it was to take this next step on a real patient. Thankfully my knots weren't too bad because I did do a bit of practice on the holiday, which is rather funny if you want to check out the video. sutures so I think I got to do about six external simple sutures so I got really good at doing the knots and we got to see a few different BCCs and melanomas so now I'm starting to recognize what they look like as well. Now to our afternoon patients. We got to freeze a few superficial lesions with liquid nitrogen, review a few patient pathology results like iron and thyroid that had come in, and do some scripts. Off topic, I got talking to my doctor about different pathologies, and something called a pericardial cyst came up. I didn't even know that cysts could grow in the pericardium of the heart, and if they do, they're generally asymptomatic but I learned about a case where it was causing discomfort. So I think I'll read up on that later to see if I can learn more about this. Well done. I'm actually going to go for a walk with a friend that I pre-organized, so it'll be a nice walk by the lake. A good way to finish the day. It's been a big day, but it's been a good day. I got to try lots of new things. Um, I know I mentioned it earlier, but I was so happy I got to do suturing, but I was struggling a little bit with the depth of the suture, so yeah, it was just good to get some guidance and do it on a real person. It, it just feels good that I'm finally progressing with some of these skills. Tomorrow will be a little bit different because I'll be with a different GP, so it won't be skin checks and cutting and suturing tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what you enjoyed most. Until next time.